Hello everybody and welcome to my real estate world. My name is Julia Hazanov and I'm a real estate agent out here in Northern California and a local expert and I work all over California. I was so fascinated by this uh, small charm, cozy, unique city out here in Benicia, California, just over the Carquinez Bridge uh, located in Solano County that I decided that I want to create a whole video to give you a little more insight about the city, the demographics, the history and the real estate market. So I hope you're going to like it and if you find it informational, please subscribe to my channel and click on the like button. Enjoy the view! Benicia is a waterside city in Solano County, which located just over the Carquinez Bridge, and it served as the capital of California for nearly 13 months from 1853 to 1854. The town of Benicia divided into four major areas. It's the east side, which is east of First Street, and First Street is the downtown of Benicia, and then there is the west side, which is just uh, west of First Street and then we have Southampton and the Industrial Park. Southampton real estate is one of the most popular one in Benicia and it's typically got a single family dwellings starting with three bedrooms and two baths and condominiums. Benicia also used to serve as USA Army Armory which was bought by the city. Even the lieutenant's quarters, which currently known as the Jefferson Street Mansion, now serves as a wedding's venue. The main retail area is First Street, which has all kinds of moms and pops restaurants, boutiques, clothing, antiques, and more. The city of Benicia was founded on May 19, 1847, on land sold to Dr. Robert Semple and Thomas Larkin by General Mariano Vallejo. It was named after the general's wife, Francesca Benicia de Vallejo. In 1848, first word of gold found in Benicia, which rumor says it started the California gold rush. Benicia was also the county seat, which later moved to Fairfield, California. The Pacific Mail Stamship Company established a major shipyard in Benicia in the 19th century. In 1901, the world's first long-distance power line crossing over the Carquinez Strait, which is the bridge, was built, delivering power from main powerhouse in Oakland up to Benicia. So the two main developments in the early 1960s would completely change Benicia forever. The first is the closing of Benicia's military arsenal and the completion of the Martinez-Benicia Bridge in 1962. What Benicia is known for primarily? Small town charming city that's located by the water, gives a villagey vibe with high quality of life diversified and unique restaurants, waterfront properties, good and fresh weather, and it never gets too hot out here. Great for fishing and sailing, high graded schools, the safety is very high, and it's a clean and very well manicured city. While walking in downtown Benicia, I've encountered this wonderful couple, which are locals, and they've been living in Benicia since the 1970s, and they would love to share a word or two about why they love the city so much. Hi, so um, I see you're a local here, out here in Benicia. Yes. Is there something you can tell us about Benicia and Benicia, and how long have you been living here? Uh, since around 1970. Wow. It's been some time. Yes. And why do you love this place? Uh, it's charming. It, it has wonderful people, almost zero crime. Uh, and that's very big. Like, it's a very safe place to be oh, yeah. and we have for a children. Very wonderful, proactive city manager that writes two letters a week. And uh, they've taken care of the homeless people here. They're just doing everything wonderful. That's great. 
single-family detached homes are the most common in Benicia. Their owner occupied and it starts with three or four bedrooms dwellings and it's account to 72% of Benicia's homes. So in August 2021, um, many homes in Benicia, the prices went up to 11% comparing to last year uh, with the median of home prices starting from 645 up until 750,000. And this is considering for um, single family homes starting from three bedrooms and two baths. With Benicia's housing market, um, we're still getting multiple offers and mostly are free of contingencies. So it means people are just willing to buy because they, they understand how unique and special Benicia is and they're willing to submit offer without anything to stop them from further purchasing the property. Although the housing market in Benicia is still very hot and most coveted, um, they're still declining of 10% with properties that weren't able to sell. However, it does not bother Benicia and it still keeps to be one of the highest real estate markets in the nation. The race and ethnicity in Benicia with about 65% are white, 13% are Hispanic or Latino, 11% Asian and 3% are African Americans. Benicia is 44% safer than most U.S. cities. It's considered very safe and that's why a lot of people are really interested in considering situating in Benicia, although the high taxes, their safety are above everything else. Benicia has different types of events taking place and some of them are the farmer's market which is taking place on Thursdays between 4 to 8 p.m. There is the art walk on Saturdays between 1 to 5 p.m. They have even a dog festivals, which are a um, festival that uh, services the taking care of the community dogs. How awesome is that? They have a wine walk and of course the 4th of July, you've got to see it. It's so grande, the parade that they have that goes all the way through the downtown on 1st Street up to the shopping center. They also have sailing at the marina, which is a competition that they hold on Thursdays and it's typically during the summertime. We are standing in the Senate chamber. Uh, the assembly is upstairs. There are three original 1853-54 Senate desks. This one, this one, the one over there on the corner, and the names on the desks are the actual names of the senators. A uh, quick uh, bit of history on the construction of the building. This building was built from the ground up in a little over three months. Everything was done on site. All the framework of the building is original. It's Redwood from Marin County. All of the bricks are original, uh, kilned on site. The hand-cut sandstone foundations are all original, Benicia sandstone, but most of the other components to build this building came from this source. There were over a thousand abandoned ships out in the bay when the crews jumped ship and ran off to the gold fields during the gold rush. They called it the forest of masts. They stripped the ships to build the buildings. I am leaning on the mast of a gold rush shading ship. These are ship's masts. The original floor, pine ship's decking. The original roofing material, zinc copper hull plating from the sides of the ships. And if you look at the wall lamps, you can see that they have a heavy base on the arms on a hinge, interior cabin lights of ships. Uh, this capital uh, was only in this building for the lower uh, 12 months, between 12 and a half months. And from here, it moved to Sacramento. They didn't start building the Capitol building uh, in Sacramento until six years after the move and it wasn't completed for until 20 years after the move, which is why this is the only early Capitol building in existence in California. Peter Burnett was the first governor. He only served half his term because he quit halfway through his term. Peter Burnett was, Burnett was an extremely uh, very pro-slavery Southern Democrat. Uh, McDougall was lieutenant governor, so when Burnett 
quit his position, McDougal automatically became governor. He had two nicknames, which can essentially sum up why he only served half a term. Back in the day, you'd address a governor as your excellency. He was addressed as your accidency. This brings us to our third governor, John Bigler, first re-elected governor in the history of California. John Bigler also is reputed to have had the most corrupt administration of any governor in the history of California. A family in San Mateo actually had the original locks when the state uh, rebuilt the building to uh, look as it did when it was a capital, you were able to track down the locks. And this is the key to the lock. They work perfectly, quite smooth, and this is how we open and lock the place. You can actually see with this lock, same lock, you actually see the throw of the ball. And the locks are two-sided. Mission was served as state capital for almost 13 months between 1853 to 1854. Um, this whole area right here, so we have the state capital building over there, and this is the carriage house that uh, right now serves as a museum. And you can actually see the carriages that people used to use back then to commute around town. And even this route over here with all the brick, the way it's uh, preserved and situated, uh, you can see how they used to commute and move around town on a road that used to look just like that. Uh, this park also boasts so many unique and historical plants and trees with over a hundred years old of age. Besides the fact that it's so historical, you can literally feel the spirit and it actually has multiple stories of being hunted. Um, it serves as a great location for photo shoots um, and you know, just, um, you know, hiking trails. Thank you for watching my video and if you would like to see more videos about other cities, please subscribe to my channel and smash that like button and I'll see you on the next one.